Hey Funkaholics, it's Terry Wellbanks coming at you from my dungeon of Funkos as always. I apologize that there hasn't been any videos this week. Normally I try to do two to three videos a week, but unfortunately uh, this week I've just been very sick. I've been trying to bounce back from that and I just haven't had any energy to do anything other than be sick. So I'm back and I'm going to try to make the videos a little bit shorter for everybody so you guys don't have to stick around for 18 minutes during every video. Although I do appreciate everybody taking time to watch and everybody taking time to comment, like, sub, things like that. It means the world to me and I can't thank you guys enough for everything. So today I'm going to do a quick video. I want to talk about personal grails and what they what they mean to me, maybe what they mean to you, and then I'm going to get out of your hair for the weekend. So the set that I want to review, I actually don't have it complete complete yet. I was fortunate enough to get the chase for it, so I'm going to show you that and the other two pops. It's the Ratatouille set. The Ratatouille set is from a movie that is through Disney Pixar from a few years ago. It's a great movie. It's very underrated. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you check it out. It's very, very good. All the Pixar movies are good, but this one definitely had a little bit less popularity than a Toy Story um, or, you know, Finding Nemo, obviously, things like that. And this movie is just as good as those, especially if you're, uh, if you like really cute rats. So I'm going to show you guys this now. This is, this set comes with Remy, Emil, and you can also get Alfredo Linguini in this set. The set is very, very well done. The pops are extremely well done. Um, I can't get over the detail on them. Again, I know I talk about this in every video, but the more that Funko puts out pops, the better the pops get. So this is a meal, and he is just a regular mouse, as you can see. He's chewing on some cheese. It's really cool, and, and um, I, I dare say cute, so he's very well done. The next one up is Alfredo Linguini. This is the chef from the movie, and Ratatouille likes to hang out on his hat. He's also really, really well done. If I can get a good picture there, he's got his freckles holding his frying pan. It's a really, really cool pop. And again, detail-wise, this isn't this isn't like every other regular pop that they used to make where they all had that same body, they all look the same, and now these are all starting to look a lot different from set to set, and I think that that's very, very good, and I think that that's what's going to keep us collectors interested to collect is if they keep things moving forward, so... The last one that I can show you, there's two of the, there's two versions of this, obviously. This is the Chase version of Remy. Um, what what the difference is in the Chase in this one and the regular one is that the, the Chase one is flocked. So this is a flocked version of Remy, um, which means that you won't be able to really fake a Chase. But at the same time, I'm, I'm a little surprised that, that they did the Chase as only a flocked version of Remy because normally a flocked version would be like a Hot Topic exclusive or something like that. I do want to pull them out of the box and see if I can get a little bit of the, if you can see the flockedness on the actual camera, uh, because it is a really, really cute pop and it, the fuzziness definitely adds to it. I think all these guys should have come base flocked and then maybe the chase, we could do them, we could do Remy maybe with a black hat or make him in a different position or something like that. But that's him there. He is really, really cute. His tail's fantastic. And just looking at him makes me smile. So that's usually a good thing. Um, the set is really, really well done. The, uh, the chase is definitely worthwhile in getting. Uh, I love it. And it's going to go right next to all the other sets, which is cool. So um, Now, I wanted to open up a box that I got. As I said, I made a trade with a gentleman from uh, New York. His name's, well, I call him NYC Steve uh, because of my other buddy, Steve. Uh, Killboy, so I, I want to make sure that uh, I want to make sure that I don't I don't mess them up in the video. This this box here is a trade that was made, and the only oh I did open the box um, in advance, and the reason why I opened the box I didn't look at any of the pops, but the reason why I opened the box is because they left it outside in the rain, and I was worried that obviously the rain got inside. It's pouring down here right now in Toronto, so I want to make sure that the rain didn't get inside of the box and destroy the pops, and it looks like they're going to be okay, so. I'm definitely excited for that. Uh, it's packaged really well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up and I'm going to show you guys what came in it. So up first, we have the Glow in the Dark Barnes & Noble exclusive. This is the Killer Croc from Suicide Squad. Now, I don't, I don't, we don't have a luxury of having Barnes & Noble down here, so their exclusives we just don't get. Look at that set. There is way too many pops in there. Um, anyways, this is the... Killer Croc, Glow in the Dark. Now, I, I really like the Killer Croc figures from this set. It just so happens that they released a ton of them. So, 
Um, I'm trying to, I was trying to avoid getting them, and plus, being that they're all mostly from the States, I haven't been able to get them, so. Next up, we have the Killer Croc in Popster, which is one that I really wanted. I believe this was from the Walmart box, the Walmart, um, mystery box, and I think that was the only way that you could get it. So, me being able to get my hands on him is pretty awesome. Um, his detail is the best. He's one of the best in Popsters. I really, really like the Two-Faced in Popster, um, and as well the Scarecrow, and this, this one here is really, really good. Like, his mouth detail, it looks so cool, so I can't wait to put him up on the shelf. He's gonna look great. Next up in the box, we have, this is the Walmart exclusive hooded Killer Croc. So I got three Killer Crocs here, plus the regular one that I have, which is great. Um... There he is. The box quality is really good. Um, this one's a little bit banged up, but I, again, for, for what it was that I traded, the value is definitely fair, and I don't want to be a complainer, and it's, it's really cool, and putting them beside each other is going to look amazing. So, Steve, thank you for that. There are two more pops in the box. Pops in the box. So I'm going to show you guys these really, really quick. This is Weapon X. I, I was all too excited to get Weapon X. Um, I do think that my other buddy Steve's actually got this guy for me, so I'm gonna try to get a hold of him before he uh, before he sends out a box and make sure that he doesn't send this to me because I want him to have uh, one of his too, and he wants to make sure that I have every single pop in the world, and he probably won't keep his, but this is Weapon X. Now, I haven't taken him out of the box. I heard out of the box he's amazing, so I'm going to do that really fast with you guys so we can see what he looks like outside of the box. And I just ripped it. That's why I don't take pops out of the box. All right. Oh, I'm so bummed. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Okay. So here we go. So actually, I, I will need a we uh, Weapon X box. Anyway, here he is here. He is actually really, really cool. He's quite heavy. Um, the bobblehead has got him looking a little bit to the left. But there he is. He looks really cool. I would have liked to seen like an angry expression on his mouth, but he's really well done. All the way around. Wow. That's a cool looking pop too. Um, that's awesome. So, okay. So I need to try to get his neck back on properly here and I can't. All right. There we go. Okay. Now the last pop in the box, I will pull out and we will have a look together. And I think my, uh, I think Steve, this was the one that I, I'm pretty sure Steve didn't want to part with, but I, uh, I I had to have him, and I'm so happy that I do. This is Juggernaut from Walgreens. He's a Walgreens exclusive. Juggernaut is one of my favorite characters from the Marvel X-Men universe, and I think that he's really, really, really well done, and I love the way he looks. I'm also going to take him out of the box, and I'm going to do my best to not rip him um, like I just did. So... Let's do this really quick so you guys can have a boo and see what it looks like. Okay. Oh. Here we go. Oh, he's huge. I love it. There he is there in all of his glory. Ready to ram some heads. His detail's really well done. I think they nailed it with the way that he looks. His head is massive. Um, I wish I could put it to scale for you guys, but the, I, I think he would have been a really cool oversized pop. Um, same with Thing. I think they should do an oversized pop of Thing, but what do I know? I'm just a consumer, right? This guy is really, really cool, and he's really well done. So if you guys get a chance to get Juggernaut, especially if you're in the States, um, make sure you pick him up. If you're in Canada and you can get one, try to get your hands on one. This pop is amazing. So um, that's wicked. So that's the trade that I made and going back to, uh, going back to NYC Steve, um, I sent him a couple of pops. One of them was a very high valued one and the other one, not so much, but it's one that he liked. So I made sure that he got it. Now I want to show you guys a personal grail that I had a chance to pick up, um, in, in a swap. I, I really wanted this pop. I love this movie as a kid. This is actually the first movie that I ever saw in theaters when I was a kid. And I remember going to see it, I remember having a blanket, and I remember sucking my finger, and I remember watching the damn thing. And I think I might have fallen asleep, to be honest, but I'm not 100%. But this movie I've watched a million times, and I love this pop, and I'm all too happy to have him. This is E.T. from, well, he's the extraterrestrial, and he's the E.T. phone home edition, I like to say. 
Uh, there's only one of him. I don't know if he's vaulted. I know he's not worth a lot. I know that I didn't have to trade a ton to get him, but I'm all too excited to have him. So I want to take him out for you guys to see as well. Um, E.T., for anybody that doesn't know, was an alien that landed. Um, it's actually, I think it's Drew Barrymore's, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's Drew Barrymore's first movie that she was in. Uh, she played she played the sister to a little boy, and they got E.T. back home. So he's not a bobblehead, like all the Marvel ones. But there he is there. As you can see, if you can see on his stomach, it's a little bit lit up. That's because his heart lights up. And uh, when he touches with his finger, that's when it all lights up, and that's when it happens. So... Um, he is, he's really, look at his, look at his ass. He's really, really well done. Um, I think, I think in a long time, maybe five, ten years down the road, he'll definitely be, uh, the prize piece to anybody's collection. If you guys can still get your hands on him and you were a fan of the movie like I was, definitely get him. He's, he's really cool. So, and, and, and that's the thing about Grails. I mean, for me, as far as I know on Pop Price Guide, I think he's worth maybe 10 bucks American. But for me, he's one of those pops that bring back nostalgia. He's one of those pops that I just, I have to collect. And he's one of those pops that I have to have. I absolutely love this pop. And a grail is a grail to who it is, right? I mean, I find, I find grails to be, the terms thrown around grails is either one of two things. It's either a personal grail, which means it's a character that you really, really want. Like to me, my most valuable pop, other than the custom that I had done from Jay, uh, or Jim from K's Customs, um, is probably my Captain Spaulding. And I think he's only worth $55 American. I have pops that are worth triple that. But that doesn't mean that they're my grails. That just means that I happen to get lucky, get the pop at the right time, and that's why they're worth a lot. This is a grail to me because this has so much memories. When I look at this pop, it brings back nostalgia. Though I don't think there's very much ET memorabilia out there anyways that you can buy. So being able to get a piece of this memorabilia is awesome, and I'm all too excited to have them. Now, I've got other grails that I consider, you know, to, to be in my collection. And a lot of people, a lot of people say grail mail. And when they show the grail mail, they show pops that I don't think that they actually even like. I, I know that sounds weird, but I think that they want them because they're worth hundreds of dollars. And a value collector is a value collector. I don't knock that. It, it, I, in fact, I mean, if I had the money, I'd probably be a value collector somewhat too. But... I would rather have pops that I know that I can sit at and love and enjoy and show off that way than show off in a monetary way. And I think that if you build your collection around pops that you love, you're going to have a collection of, of, of Funkos that are amazing. From, from the back end to the front end, you're going to have exactly what you want. And I love Grails. I love, I love talking about Grails. I love talking about E.T. I love talking about my Ninja Turtles. I love talking about my Captain Spaulding, um, my Freddy and my Jason, especially my Case Custom, my... Um, you know, even even the new Punisher one that I got, uh, the, the Punisher Chase, that's a grail of mine. I don't care what it's worth, but that pop looks so amazing, right? So it's like, if if your pop's worth a lot, awesome. But I really hope that everybody out there is making, or they consider a grail, one that they love. And, and that's really what it should be. It should be a pop that you love. It should be a pop that you find... Uh, sexy in your own way or, or or it brings it floods memories back to you and and I, I mean that's why I'm hoping they make a Pee Wee Herman pop I know Pee Wee Herman was but um, Pee Wee Herman to me I grew up on Pee Wee Herman I grew up on Fraggle Rock so I want to see Fraggle Rock sets I want to see Pee Wee Herman sets and speaking of seeing sets I mean how cool would a Sopranos if they made the Godfather they should be able to make Sopranos or a Dexter I saw a Dexter custom set and I was just was mind blown. There's so many sets that they could make that I'm hoping that they eventually do. Instead of making ones like Ghost in the Shell uh, from the movie or Tomorrowland, which probably was a money killer, um, I would love to see them invest into some of these TV shows or some of these older movies and things like that. Like Fraggle Rock would be so wicked. It would look just like the Muppets guys, only probably be a little bit cooler to be honest. So or or baby Muppets, you know, like I remember these old McDonald's toys that I used to have when they were riding in little carts or I think Fozzie was on a tricycle. And I remember these toys and, and when I see them, like I had to buy them. Uh, the old, those actual toys, but when I see these these old toys, it just floods back memories and it, and it brings back good memories, which is what I think we all need nowadays with the way the world is and the way things are going. I think we all need a reminder of good times and when things were great and things to show our own families too, right? So make your grails your own and make your collections your own is basically what I'm trying to say. I hope that everybody goes out there and like I said, $10 pop, $8 pop, $3 pop, I don't care. 
this guy is going straight up on my top shelf, and I'm so happy to have him. And if he ends up being worth a ton, awesome. If he doesn't, I don't care. He's still one of my favorite pieces. So thank you guys so much for watching, as always. Taking time to subscribe, uh, being part of my channel, and commenting and interacting. It's really, really cool. If you guys can take time to join a few of the Facebook groups that I always like to mention, Funko BST Canada, Funko Canadian Alliance, Pop Community UK, um, Windsor Funko and Friends, uh, you can also join Pop Society USA. Those are all groups on Facebook that is really, really great. You can also check out um, different YouTube channels that are out there that are that are linked to mine that, that I subscribe to. Obviously, if you subscribe to me, I'm going to take time to subscribe back. That's the very least that I can do. And also, please check out Funkaholics Anonymous worldwide. We're doing a giveaway right now. We just hit 200 member, members. I know, it's, I know it's not the biggest number, but we're going to do a giveaway at 200. We'll probably do another one at 500. Um, we've got an integrated mins. Um, we've got great people in the group. If you're looking to trade, looking to have great conversation, post your collection, and actually get comments instead of people trying to throw it in their face as to how much theirs is worth, then you're going you're gonna to find the right place. So please join us on there. Please like the video if you'd love to subscribe, or if you'd love, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I love that. And as always, I really greatly appreciate all the comments and all the, uh, all the feedback, good or bad. I love it all. So thank you so much. And I hope to talk to you guys soon. Please be good to each other. I just looked at the time. It's 16 minutes and 23 seconds. Damn it. I'm sorry. I will tighten this up. Hopefully I can do another video guys for you guys on Sunday. Be good to each other. Much love everyone. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Bye.